So this is the broadcast tool here, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see in all its glory. You can see the notation. You can also see the engine evaluation next to each move and also how long they spend. What I like is you can make your own moves on the board. You can check the alternatives to what the players did. And even for the moves you make, you get the computer evaluation here. Fantastic. I think you get it quicker and better as a premium member, such as yours truly. What I also like, there is a chat function. You can exchange things yeah. with people from all over the world. If you want to see something else, let's say you're watching a tournament and you want to see all the games at once, no problem displaying. I have no idea how many games there are, like 128 games at the same time. You can do even more. This is a team competition. You click on multi-board. That's beautiful. You can see all the eight games going on at once. You can see the games and standings, which I... What we got? I'll click around. Games and standings, here. Yeah. Analysis, if we click on that tab, that's Let's a nice click tab. on it. You can see that it's a great little graphical illustration. The red line is zero, that is the absolute even mark. And if the white bars are go up, the further up they go, the bigger the advantage. And the black bars show a black advantage. Then there is a database, and here we get the alternatives. And we, if we click on a move in the database, bam! It gets played on the board. Fantastic. And then the PGN can even be downloaded. I like that feature. Yeah. Whatever tournament or game you're following, you click it and you open it in the program of your choice. Yeah, and one of the great things I like to see as well is when we get a video from the playing hall. I like to see them in their seats, nervous. You feel the tension, you feel like you're there, don't you? Chess is really becoming a spectator's internet sport. Great that we can see that. I also love to see um, the fact that we can get in some of our friends to join us during the broadcast. And it's all interactive, that's what we love. And a lot of overview functions there. A lot of great functions there, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you take advantage of all of them. Let's get back to the, uh, to the commentary. Keep tweeting us, Keep hashtag C24Live. We love to hear from you. Ask us anything about mainly about Lawrence Tra life, but if you have other questions, they're also welcome. Also, send us anything you like about Jan. F <laughs> hashtag C24 Live. Absolutely. Uh
Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Dubov and today I'll show you one of my recent games, my game against um, Sergei Karakin from the Russian Super Final. So I was asked by uh, Ch Ch HS24 guys to, to show the game. So first of all, let's start with obvious things. So obviously when you play when you play the game, it normally takes you like two weeks to uh, to, uh, to check it precisely and to make some annotations. So obviously as the lines I will show today uh, are not exactly, you know, are not exactly very precise and maybe maybe I'll make some uh, mistakes, but at least I will show you what I was thinking of during the game. And uh, yeah, therefore, probably we will not use an engine. I have checked it briefly um, myself already, so I'll just uh, give you the main directions. It's, it is obviously a very sharp game, so we could basically spend like two weeks analyzing it, but only, we, only have, uh, we only have one hour, so let's just um, jump, jump, jump right into it. So I started with one e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, Italian, bishop c5, c3, knight f6. And this is the main line, d4, ed, and b4 is a rare move. Um, now I learned actually uh, during the game, I thought it's uh, pretty much a square soft variation, but then after the game, I learned that it's actually called a Hon vibration. Uh, still, I want to, still I want to praise Alec, Squares of who um, who played this against Anand, I believe, in a very very exciting exhibition game. So if you want to, um, so if you want to learn more about this line, you should definitely check this game. So after Bishop B6, E5, Anand went D5 here, and then uh, Oleg took on F6, D takes C4. I think we need to check. Bishop e6, f takes g7, rook j8, and so on. So it's just a mess. Um, so at the end of the day, Anand won a beautiful game. So I think I'll just show one more move. I think it was b5, knight b4. A piece sacrifice to, um, yeah, to get the pawns running. So this is, um, this is pretty much the, the basic game of the line. Uh, there is also bishop e7. Which is kind of fine. Then you go e5, uh, knight e4, b5. Now I think d5 is natural, but it, it just loses on the spot after uh, e takes d6, knight takes d6 is forced, b takes c6, knight takes c4 is forced. Then we take on b7, and then after queen a4 check, we capture the knight. So white is just a piece up. This doesn't work. So after bishop e7, b5 94 e5 94 b5 black has to go uh 95 and then we do pretty much the same thing we just go bishop d5 knight x3 takes takes and castle and once again you can uh so we we basically <laughs> we basically spend like two two weeks analyzing this, this position so i i will not be able to to show you everything having one hour but in general it's just a mess i think black is fine objectively but it kind of makes sense for white to to play this way if you like to to sacrifice material and play play with initiative you could probably like it black is uh completely fine though maybe black is even slightly better with the, the best play bishop b6 uh, was played by karakin and the move is also fine e5 so now once again d5 is a square so fun on game so he went knight e4. Knight e4 makes a lot of sense as well because uh, bishop d5, you can check it yourself, but uh, bishop d5 is not one of the first uh, lines of an engine, at least of a weak engine at the very beginning. And uh, the thing is that if we do something else, for instance, if we take on d4, then black just plays d5. Uh, let's say we take, I don't know, queen or knight takes, maybe knight takes. And black is probably even slightly better. He has a very comfortable position, but uh, the main thing is that we we even failed to yeah to to make him show some uh, home prep. So that's why that's why he he probably wanted to to play knight e4. I think it was a so sort of a controversy in his eyes. So he he basically avoids all the messy lines with d5. E of D, D takes C4 and he just goes for a solid line that is uh, 
just very good for black. But after bishop d5, at least uh, black has to know something, it turns out. And yeah, so knight x3 is forced, first of all, the knight is hanging. I mean, technically, there is also f5, but after f5, like all the moves are good, you can just take on d4, for instance. So obviously it's very difficult to, to castle. So yeah, white is very happy here. So obviously you take on c3, knight takes c3, d takes c3. And now we go bishop g5. This is a, the key move, uh, forcing knight to seven. Once again, technically f6 is possible, but then I believe we just take and after g takes f6, I mean, it just looks completely lost for black. I guess we can win castle for instance f takes g5, I don't know, rook e1, king f8, and now we do something, but it should be should be checkmate somehow. Like if we don't win immediately, we can probably go b5, but in general, it just feels like uh, black is completely lost. Knight takes g5 is also an option. Once again, you can check it, uh, you can check it yourself. Yeah, because in this live chess view, we, uh, we don't have an option of uh, loading really really strong engines and i don't want to uh to tease you guys with some weak engines so yeah i will just um i'll just tell you what i know so f6 is just a bad move 97 is pretty much forced now we castle he played h6 here which is actually a very good move so the difference is that uh if you start with castling and then just like in the game, we go bishop b3. And then if black plays h6 here, bishop h4 would be would be transposition. But in fact, white does not even need to play bishop h4 in this line, but he can just go queen d3. And the thing is that there is no way h6 g5, as after knight takes g5, we basically checkmate. Queen h7 mate is a threat. After knight g6, we have queen takes and the spin uh, protects the queen. So this is a this is even better version for white comparing to the game. Um, so that's why he played h6. There is also a5, by the way. A5 is also a decent move. But then I think uh, the problem is knight h4, and then knight f5 is a threat, and then once again white is coming, but black has to pray. So for instance, if you go h6, I think it's queen h5. Attacking f7, now after knight takes d5, there is bishop takes d8 as always. And let's say if you go g6, then we go back to f3. And it's still a massive attack, we just play bishop f6 and um, yeah, continue the game if we fail to checkmate immediately. So that's why he played h6. So h6 is actually a very good move. Because now uh, we tried it at home, but there is no... There is no point in something like bishop b3, just like in the previous line, because here I think black just takes. And it does look stylish, but it um, yeah, it just doesn't work for uh, for white. I think after d5, probably. And then after ed, queen takes. Yes, we can take on f7, but after king f8, so we don't want to, uh, to trade the queens, being a piece down, and queen takes h2 is also checkmating threat so yeah we cannot we we cannot avoid both so yeah that's why uh white has to play bishop h4 here which i did he castled here which is i think uh well in terms of in terms of uh the best play is probably a mistake so it's either g5 or c2 followed by g5 here um once again, I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, publish my, uh, my 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 opening lines, even for you guys, and especially, yeah, especially uh, because I haven't checked it precisely. But uh, long story short, after g5, we just take on g5, and then after uh, knight takes d5, we just go knight f3 back. So knight e7 is forced. Both queen and knight are hanging, so knight e7 is the only way to, to protect both. And then I think we just play uh, something like maybe rook e1 again. And then it's a mess. So yeah, I've spent like a few, few days looking, in, uh, looking at this position. So we are just a piece down. 
but it's very difficult for black to to finish the, the development and white ne next move is something like bishop f6 so for instance let's play some i don't know random moves but it's kind of difficult for uh, for black to uh, to even come up with random moves i mean with an engine black is fine but uh without and so let's say he goes a5 i don't know b5 c6 i don't know why c6 though so why, what do you play here i don't know after d5 it's always e takes uh, that's why we play rook e1 to have this rook takes a seven idea um so yeah maybe you go rook j for instance but then there is always an idea of queen c2 followed by queen h7 and the queen starts coming so I thought in terms of practical game, it looks extremely unpleasant for black. Also objectively, he's fine, of course. I mean, like any strong engine, engine will say it's uh, like zero, zero, zero or something. So there is a big number of cool lines here. And there is also, um, there is also h takes g5. That does not lose as well. So we take on g5. And then again, it's a mess. Um, so I guess here black can go a5 as well. And then it's just a mess. It's something like queen f3. Now both rook h7 and rook f8 are possible. So for instance, rook f8. Then I think we play something like just rook d1 takes maybe bishop b3 or bishop c4. I mean, in general, it's a, it's a massive attack. So bishop h6 is coming. Then in some lights, we, we just go rook e1, e4, h4. Um, yeah, at least this is kind of chess I like. I thought it's yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting game. Once again, I have to uh, I have to admit, black is fine here. So I mean, it's not that we close the um, the Italian or something, but yeah, this line is decent. It kind of makes sense. I guess you can also play d6 here, as far as I remember, and then just one of the most lines goes. Queen f3. Uh, then I guess black plays something like bishop e6. Bishop takes b7, I believe. And now d5. And then white, white plays bishop c6 check. And black takes. Bishop takes d8. Let's say, I don't know, rook takes d8. And once again, it's a mess. So we will capture c3. Um, yeah, black has like three three minor pieces and uh, yeah, three minor pieces for a queen and how many? I think two pawns, right? So three minor pieces for uh, for a queen and two pawns. But yeah, it's very difficult. So it's pretty much about uh, about initiative here. So for instance, after knight d4, black normally goes king d7, rook d2, j8, and he tries to checkmate. White will also try some a4, a5 ideas in some lines. I mean, first we, we need to avoid blundering knight to check, and then we start this a4, a5 business. So once again, it's a mess, and it's still, uh, still uh, pretty much equal, I believe. And once again, I didn't mind playing uh, playing a crazy game of this kind at all. So g5 is probably the move. You can also include c2. And then uh, after queen d2, you go g5. This makes sense as well. So now we can also play bishop g3. But in general, once again, you can just take on g5 and pray. So the thing is, I believe after knight takes g5, as the idea of this inclusion of c2 for black is that after bishop takes g5, g6, there is no queen of three anymore. And after queen f4, there is knight takes d5. And after bishop takes d8, the queen is hanging. Unlike in the previous line with the queen on f3. So once again, as far as I remember, after c2, queen d2, g5, it's a little more precise to go bishop g3. Then black can take on d5, queen takes d5. I mean, it's still a sharp position, but black is fine. I think he just goes like castles and then uh, d6 pretty much and pretty much no, no matter what we do and it's around equal for instance rook c1 d6 cd let's say bishop e6 queen takes b7 cd rook takes c2 was one of the lines i believe and yeah black uh black has two bishops black is obviously fine but in general it's just 
a solid for uh, for white as well. So objectively, it's even black who is sort of trying to put some pressure here, but it's very close to a draw. And yeah, I felt like if someone will be as good that he gets a, this position yeah, without any knowledge, then I will, yeah, yeah, I would probably have lost anyway. So yeah, I did not really care. So this C2 is a decent line. Uh, so saying all that, let's uh, go back to the game. So he played castles here, which is obviously the most natural move. Rook e1, and he played queen a in, queen a8, which is a uh, very natural once again. He is just trying to unpin the knight to play something like knight g6 or knight f5. Still, the best move here is a5, I guess. And then, uh, first of all, b5 is also an option. But secondly, uh, one of the final lines here was, I guess it was queen d3, a takes b4, bishop b3. So now the, the point is that bishop c2 is a massive threat. So for instance, if you go rook a3, then bishop c2 pretty much wins. So queen h7 mate is a threat. And after g6, we just go on bishop f6, and then we checkmate slowly. We can even go in some lines, for instance, after queen a8, we can even consider something like rook e4 bringing the rook to h4. Uh, if uh, yeah, if queen e4 followed by queen h4 doesn't win immediately, but in general this should be just checkmate. It's pretty much resigns for black. So after uh, bishop b3, black is uh, black is forced to play queen e8. So the idea is to meet bishop c2 by knight uh, g6, blocking the the diagonal. So that's why uh, white plays bishop f6 here. Just trying to, yeah, I don't know, to get closer. So maybe the idea is to play knight h4 followed by queen g3. And as far as I remember, once again, if you will turn uh, some weak engine on, it will say some stupid things. But a really decent engine, I think, come, comes up with rook a3 here. And then it's a funny. Well, not funny draw, but it's zero, 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 and there is a funny repetition. So the idea of rook a3 is to take on b3. So black wants dramatically to, to, to eliminate this bishop, uh, which would definitely give him better odds to, to survive the attack. So white plays knight h4 here. So still there is knight g6 after bishop c2. This doesn't make a lot of sense. So white goes knight h4. So the idea is queen g3. Therefore, black takes on b3. The point is that now after queen g3, black is just in time to play knight g6. And uh, yeah, with the bishop on b3, there was always an issue of queen takes g6 here. And there, there was a pin by, by this bishop, but now the, the bishop is eliminated and black is in time. So white just takes on b3 instead. And black goes king h8. Um, I don't remember why exactly, but the thing is that if you start with knight g6 here, then I guess knight f5 just wins. And after g takes, I guess we just take back queen d8 is forced, and then somehow we win. I guess we have uh, quite a big number of ways here. Maybe we just go knight e7 check, for instance. And then after king h7, we just take on g6 and go rook e7 check. Then we take on g6 and checkmate, but in general, it's quite obvious that white is winning. So black pieces are still stuck on uh, eighth rank. So that's why black has to go king h8 here. And the funny draw here is queen h3. So now if you play some random move, let's say you go d5 attacking the queen, uh, white, uh, white's idea is knight g6 check. So this is kind of cute. So if you take on g6, no matter how exactly, we just go queen takes h6 check. So there is no g takes as there is a pin. And after king g8, we just checkmate on g7. So if you go king g8 here, then we just take on e7 with a check. And then we'll say take, take on f8, and we are a bunch of material up. So this whole thing just doesn't work for black. Knight g6 check is a very strong threat. So black has to go king h7 here. And then, uh, as an engine likes to do, we just go queen d3 check back. Yeah, king h8, queen h3. There we go. 
So it's a three a threefold repetition. I think White had some ways to to do to deviate from it, but uh, yeah, it's really difficult to to benefit here. So this line, I think, still holds for Black, although it looks much more scary than the one with uh, H6, C2, and G5. Still, I don't know. It's a matter of taste, I would say. I mean, all the lines look scary for Black here. So A5 is fine. So let's just um, let's just try to uh, to look at this line again because we we'll need to to remember it later. So queen d3 takes bishop b3, rook a3, uh, bishop f6 it was, rook a3, knight h4, rook takes b3, queen g3, and it's a draw. Okay, so now let's go back to the game. He went queen a8 here. I played bishop b3, which I knew is good. So now the last thing I remembered about this position was that uh, there is a line of knight f5. Which looks very natural. So you basically play queen a to prevent some knight jump. So I knew queen d3 is a move. And now black has to go d6 or d5, doesn't matter. We go e, e takes d6. And black has to play queen d7 here. As uh, after bishop e6, something bad happens. Something bad is probably just bishop takes e6 followed by d7. And queening looks very convincing to me. So that's why black has to play queen d7. Then we just go rook a to d1. Now I guess black is black has to take uh, with a pawn as queen takes d6 leads to a very bad position for him after queen b1. And the, yeah, the key idea is that. There are not too many squares available uh, for the queen, so he has to go queen g6, bishop c2, and now rook e5 is a threat. And I think the line goes like queen h5, maybe rook e5, g6, and maybe even h3, and then we just go g4. So black is pretty much forced to do something like this, where with an extra queen, white is obviously much better. And yeah, c, uh, c takes d6 is a move here, and then after bishop takes f bishop f6, it's still a mess where uh, white has very decent prospects. Still, uh, I felt like knight f5. I mean, at home we felt like knight f5 is the only way for black to go, and uh, he played a5 instead. And this is the point where I started to where I started to think. So I realized quite quite quickly that basically so bishop f6 is reasonable. We know this idea from the previous lines, and queen d3 looks reasonable indeed. So it did not take me um, too long time to realize that actually queen d3 a takes b4 is a direct transposition to the position um, we looked at earlier. So bishop f6, rook h3, knight h4, rook takes b3, a takes b3, king h8, and so on is the line we saw. Uh, that leads to, to a final repetition. So that's why I decided to play bishop f6. I mean, I didn't want a repetition, and, and I sort of remembered that a5 uh, was not amongst uh, his best moves here. Or maybe there is only one like really good move that is knight f5. So I thought, uh, yeah, there is no reason to go for a for lines that ends with a draw, and why not to start with bishop f6 if we can do it? So I thought, like my logic was uh, that here after a5, it's kind of logical that we played queen d3 because here we could not play bishop f6, the queen was still on d8, and now black would just take, then go knight like random square, he can take on d5, he can go knight g6, and then he just eliminates f6 immediately and simply wins. So that's why bishop f6 doesn't work here, and that's why we uh, we were going to play queen d3. But then in the game, bishop f6 looks perfect, so there is no g takes anymore. So I felt like I'm just gaining a tempo comparing to the line we looked at. He went a4, bishop c4, which doesn't change much. And then uh, he played knight g6. So once again, there is no breakthrough like d5 or d6 just because of ed and now three pieces start attacking a seven and after g takes, d takes a seven simply traps the rook. So he played knight g6 here. And this is very important point where I made a mistake. So I went queen d3. 
Um, so let's first look um, look at the game, and then I will show you why why this is a, why this is a mistake. So I went queen d3. I felt like d5 is pretty much the only move here, and that is true. So first of all, queen takes g6 is a threat. Secondly, if you go with the knight f4, then I thought queen f5 just wins. So yeah, at some point we just start attacking g7, and this ends the game. So for instance, d5, queen takes f4. D takes c4, we just go queen g3 attacking g7, then after g6, we go, I mean, it's a matter of taste. So for instance, we can play, I don't know, queen f4, king h7 is forced, then we can probably play rook e4 with the idea of queen takes h6 and rook h4 mate. But it's just, a, I mean, it's just a funny way. So knight g5 also wins here, like pass probably wins here. Everything queens here. So basically, d5 looks forced. E takes d6. Now bishop e6 is forced because uh, it, it's not only his queen that is attacked, but uh, the knight on g6 is also under attack. So he has to go bishop e6, blocking the, the diagonal and defending the queen. And then I thought I will just win somehow. I don't know why exactly I thought so. But my feeling was like, I'll just take on e6. If takes, I will just go d7. He has to go queen f7. And I thought, okay, come on, give me a break. Yeah, I'll win somehow. So first of all, I have d8. d8 queen takes, takes. I saw that he has knight f4. But I mean, first of all, I was not too worried about it, which was probably a mistake, by the way. But I thought like, at very least, I will just take on c3. And I'm an exchange up. Uh, which I mean now, now I get it. Which doesn't even mean white is not worse, but from from far away I felt like uh, yeah I'm just an exchange up and this has to be a good position for um, for me maybe after some queen c4 and rook e4 or something like that. Secondly, I thought uh, there is also an option of playing queen takes c3, attacking g7. So he has to play g takes f6. And then my point was, I guess, to take on f6. And once again, I felt like uh, something is coming. So for instance, after queen d8, I have rook takes e6. Um, yeah, now if you take, then it's a funny checkmate, but this is obviously a cooperative line. Uh, Black can just play. So first of all, he can take on f6 here and go king g7, which, um, sort of gives white some edge, but it's it's far from uh, from the end of the world. And secondly, what's even, uh, what's even more annoying, there is even c takes d6 here. And then I guess rook takes c6 leads nowhere as he can just take and go king h7. And there is no mate. So yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was a little lazy uh, thinking of all the stuff. I thought something will, uh, something will happen here. And then when he played it, I started considering, uh, I started considering my, uh, my, op my options deeply. And I came to, yeah, to quite an unpleasant co conclusion that my lines don't really work. So first of all, after Bishop takes a six, F takes is probably fine as well, but uh, I realized that there is knight f4 intermediate, which leads to a brilliant position for black. So the point is that our queen is attacked and um, no matter what we do exactly, we can take on c3, for instance, or we can go queen f5. He wants to take on a six with the pawn. So it's a little bit strange. You probably expect a knight f4 followed by knight takes a six, but he takes with the pawn. And the point is that this knight on f4 gives him a chance to um, to start, uh, start creating stress. For instance, after bishop takes g7, he has queen g6. Now queen takes g2 is a checkmating threat, so I just lose the bishop. And for instance, after queen f5, once again, he just takes on e6, queen takes f4, rook takes f6, and black is just, uh, I mean, I wanted to say fine, but black is probably just winning. So I realized this doesn't work at all. And uh, yeah, I ended up playing this queen takes g6 move here, which we'll, uh, which we'll discuss later. So that's why one of the moves here for white is queen c2. So there is another option of knight h4. 
Knight h4 is a, is actually a very strong move as well. You will uh, you will probably have a tremendous joy analyzing it yourself. I mean, if you like chess, I think you will have great fun looking at it. We we cannot cover all the lines. So knight h4 is a little bit sharper, but I think uh, both knight h4 and queen c2 actually win. And I think queen c2 is uh, more uh, more human, I would say, although it's still based on the same queen sacrifice. So after queen c2, d5 is still forced. Knight f4, queen f5 just transposes to the lines we consider to be black, uh, bad for black. So d5 is forced. It takes d6. Bishop is 6 is forced again. And now in this line, unlike in the game, black can play bishop takes c3 first. Uh, white can play bishop takes c3, sorry. So c takes d6 is only a reasonable move. And then just like in the game, white takes on g6, f takes, rook takes c6. Now once again, we have this, um, yeah, we have this morphy stuff. But the thing is uh, that after, so black, pretty much black cannot save a queen here. So black pretty much has to play something that attacks the c4 bishop. It's queen c6 or queen f7. Or queen c8 doesn't matter. Let's say queen c6. We take on g6. The same line would happen after queen f7 or queen c8. So queen takes c4 check. Is, uh, queen takes c4 is forced. Rook takes g7 check. King h8 is forced. We go rook c7 check. Um, so it's a check, and we attack the queen. So queen takes c3 is forced, and rook takes c3. And now it's an ending with an extra pawn for white, and uh, he has brilliant chances to win this. Not only because of an extra material, but also because of uh, a very bad pawn structure for black. So this d6 pawn is much more of a weakness than uh, of a strong pass pawn. So this is, I think, just a technical loss for black. Um, and this was, I think, what uh, what I should have played in general. But the thing is that when I played queen d3, I did not really. I did not really go that deep, and I, yeah, I had not yet realized that I would go to, to this mess with a with a queen sacrifice. So knight h4, I will just tell you it's a very good move as well. Um, I mean, you can have great fun looking at it. It's also a very very interesting line. So I played queen d3, d5, e takes d6, bishop e6. So now we know all the ideas. Knight f4 is coming. And now, um, so in the queen c2 line, bishop takes c3 was a move here. So the difference is that obviously if you go bishop takes c3 here, black is in time to take on c4 with a tempo. And then after queen takes c4, all the moves are good for him, like queen d7, for instance, d c, queen takes c7. And um, yeah, we got nowhere. It's just a very dry equal position that will probably that will probably become an ending quite soon. So I was obviously disappointed, and then I started, um, yeah, started looking and looking at my options, and then I realized I have this queen takes g6, and I immediately felt like, okay, if it doesn't lose by force, I will definitely play it because it's a very cool move, and uh, I mean, you don't get too too many chances to play such a move against strong players, so yeah. I, I mean, I just checked it. I realized it probably works. At least I'm not worse, and I just played it. So let's uh, jump into it. So queen takes g6. F takes is obviously forced. Rook takes t6. So now he has many moves. Um, queen c6 is one of them, is, uh, and is probably the best. Mentioned by uh, all the smart uh, commentators of, of the world, who would obviously would obviously play it themselves. Uh, he correctly went queen f7, which to me feels like the most natural move. Um, so what are the options? So first of all, if he takes on e6, then we just take back, king goes somewhere. Bishop e7 probably wins here, but even bishop takes c3, c takes d6, rook d1, for instance, should be just, uh, should be just lost for black. And uh, now, so queen f7 means he is trying to save the queen. Queen c6 is also an option indeed, and this is indeed the best move. Still, I find it funny when uh, some 
I mean, random commentators say, how can you miss queen c6? I mean, okay, guys, I mean, come and play. I'll show you how. So rook e7 check, queen takes c4 is forced, rook takes g7 check, king h8 is forced, rook takes c7 check, rook takes f6, rook takes c4, rook takes d6, rook takes c3. And white is a pawn up. So I saw that line playing queen takes g6. Uh, yeah, I felt like, first of all, I have a decent chances to win this. And secondly, yeah, I thought it's, uh, I mean, it's probably a great scenario to, to, to sacrifice a queen and end up in an ending with, with an extra pawn, a zero risk and uh, decent chances to win. Still after bishop d4, uh, so now there is no rook d3 or rook d1 because the bishop takes f2, we have to take on d4, takes and play something like a3. Black has very good chances to, to save this indeed, although it's... Uh, I mean, it's not a dead draw. It's not, for instance, like three, three against two rook ending. So black has to work. Normally, I mean, if you pick up Magnus here as white, I mean, you probably say Magnus will definitely win it or something. So it's not, a, I mean, it's not a walk in the park. It's not a draw by force or anything. So I can understand why Eric and D uh, didn't want to do this, but still black has very good chances for a draw. So the, the difference as you can spot is that uh, we have looked at pretty much the same position, but the g6 pawn was on d6 in the lines after queen c2. And that is much better pawn structure for white, and then he wins. With the pawn on g6, it's much more of a flexible for black, and he doesn't have a weakness on d6, so black has much better chances to save this. Still, queen c6 was the way to go. Uh, Karekin played queen f7 here. Uh, which is easy, which is easy to explain. First of all, uh, a win would uh, would win him the tournament, I believe. And secondly, it's not at all clear what's wrong with that. So after rook e seven, black just takes on f six, and then let's say takes takes. I don't know, takes takes. Black is just better. Even the c c three pawn has survived. Um, yeah, and it feels like he will just save a queen. So I played bishop takes c three. Now rook e4 is a threat, winning a queen. Uh, obviously, both we, um, both when you, I'll play bishop takes c3. Now, the thing is that c takes d6, I guess, leads to to an exact to an exact transposition to the ending with the pawn on d6. We looked at uh, in the queen c2 line. So rook takes g6, queen takes c4 is forced. We take rook c7 check takes takes and here we go again it's the same ending in a brilliant version for white and this is just lost for black i believe so that's why he played king h8 which was obviously his original idea so first of all let me show that king h7 doesn't save a queen as well as uh, we just go rook e7 and uh, yeah he gets under attack one more time so that's why he goes king h8 now there is no rook e7 because of queen takes c4. And bishop takes g7 leads nowhere after king's j, king j8. And I guess this was his original uh, his original point. He goes king h8. I mean, white only has two minor pieces for a queen. And it's not even obvious where is the compensation exactly. So white has to come up with, with, with something. And this something is rook e4 that I played. And uh, now we attack a queen. So queen d7 obviously runs into rook e7 in a very bad way. So let's say we, he takes, we take on g7 with the check, then we take on f8 with, with the check, and we, I mean, we're even material up. So after king h8, like at very least, we can even go rook h7, take on d6, and we are a piece up. So after rook e4, queen f5 is uh, sort of forced. Here I played rook e7. Uh, which is obviously my my basic idea. So I, um, as the point of this rook e4 inclusion is that after rook e7, the bishop on c4 was hanging. So I had to I had to protect first, and then I go rook e7. And here he played rook g8, which sort of surprised me because I felt like uh, it leads to, to to winning position for white. What I expected him to do was rook f6. And uh, yeah, then I guess the plan was to go d7. And then it's a very strange position. Actually, I was not sure that I'm winning here. I mean, my position looks nice, but it's not even obvious what is the threat exactly. 
So for instance, if he plays rook d8, rook e8 check runs into rook f8. And I thought I will probably have to um, have to play for uh, for some ideas with domination, just like in the game. I'll probably just take queen takes f6. I will go rook h check. So king h7 is forced. Now I don't know if I need to go bishop j8 and then bishop somewhere. Maybe I actually do. So for instance, I do something like this. And then I thought I will probably just one day I will just take. And then I will do something like rook d1. And I will hope it's good for me. Which is not even clear now. So let's say he, he goes c6. And the bishop on b6 will uh, will, will, con will control d8 as well. So rook f6, I thought in terms of human game, was a was much better chance. He told me after the game that he saw some... Uh, some win here for white, which is probably true. Um, but yeah, I mean, at least I didn't see it clear. So there is probably a win, but it's not that simple. Maybe we just go rook e1. Uh, so now rook takes d7 runs into bishop g8 check and bishop e6 followed by bishop takes d7. Uh, so he probably he probably has to play c6 here. And then we do something smart that I actually failed to mention yet, but I think I would play something like, I don't know, maybe h4. And once again, white is trying to say that black is basically paralyzed. He, he will never take on d7 because of this bishop j8, bishop e6 stuff. And then we will just improve slowly. We will probably go rook, I don't know, 1 to e7 or rook e6 followed by bishop d3. So finally, we will, um, yeah, we will get to the king. But yeah, I mean, it's far from, uh, far from clear to me, to be honest. Still, it feels like white is winning, I have to say. So maybe that's what he didn't like. So as uh, as I told you, you, I only had few few days after the game. So I mean, I have not really, I have not really checked it precisely. Um, but rook f6 was, was what I was more worried, uh, worried during the game. He went rook g8 instead, uh, which I thought is much better scenario for me. So I took on g8, rook takes g8, d takes c7. Uh, so now black is obviously paralyzed. So if this pawn on c7 will survive, then uh, it's obviously re resigned. So now it's not a queen sacrifice anymore. It's more of a trade. So white has a, a rook and a knight. And a pawn for, for a queen, which is not exactly a sacrifice. I mean, it's not that we are uh, that much material down. And obviously, the, the pawn on c7 makes white chances brilliant. So I think he, he simply blundered, actually. He was a little bit unlucky to blunder at the very important moment. So he went queen c2 here, which I guess was his original idea. And uh, his point was to remove the bishop from c3 and then to take on c7. And I feel like he probably blundered bishop e5, or maybe he saw there is something with uh, taking on f2 here that works for uh, for black. But then when we got to this position, yeah, somehow we just sought a little, and I think both we realized that black is basically lost. I was actually sort of surprised. I thought I, I was absolutely sure white is better. But I was actually surprised that now it's actually dead lost, which was obviously which was obviously a very nice surprise for me. Still, as always, he kept um, he kept coming with some some traps. So he took on f2, king h1, bishop b6. I played h3. Um, well, there is no point to rush. So basically, his uh, his queen is. Uh, well, not uh, not pinned, but he he always needs it at c file because once uh, once he removes it, I will have some bishop takes g seven. So, for instance, he played king king h seven here. I went rook e one, and just improving my position. So obviously, you cannot take on a two because of rook takes g seven and c eight queen. So he he needs his queen to control the c eight square. You can also start with c eight here. So once again, this is a matter of taste. Maybe you even keep showing both and go knight h4, followed by knight takes g6. Anyways, this is just loss. So he went a3 just to 
just to i don't know create some miracle chance that at some point he will take on a2 and um, his pawn will be one uh, one faster um running to a1 i went king h2 slowly but surely improving my position he went g5 um now i thought i played all the defensive moves so it's probably time to time to start checkmating i played knight d4 so the idea is that I want to either bring the knight to a5 and take on g7, or maybe in some lines I want to go knight b5, knight d6. He went queen c4. I actually expected him to play uh, queen c3. And then I guess I had some uh, some idea. What could be my idea? I think my idea was to play rook e4, uh, simply protecting the rook. So knight f5 is a threat again. And now if he plays queen d3, then I think I am in time with c8. At least that was my uh, plan as far as I remember. So he has to take, we take on g7, king h8, and here we sink a little and uh, and checkmate somehow. Um, I don't know how exactly though, but at the very least we can just collect a rook if we are lazy enough. Then after king f7, we probably go. I mean, not that something is wrong with rook e1, but we can just go knight f5 to go for style points. And after uh, queen takes e4, there is, there is 96 check. So white is now a piece up and uh, yeah, keeps attacking. So this is obviously a loss for black. He went queen c4 instead. Um, yeah, keep, keeping an eye on a2 as well. But this allows knight a5, which I played. He played queen takes before. Um, I played rook c1. Rook c1, I thought, is a good move. So here, once again, it's a little trap from uh, from him. So it looks tempting to go c8 queen, hoping for takes, takes, king h8, and some, um, some checkmate here. I think I have uh, many ways to checkmate. So for instance, I can go... I guess rook g6, take on h6, then I go knight d6 to, um, yeah, to get the f7 square away, to uh, to take away the, the f7 square from from the king, and then rook h8 mate is um, inevitable. But the problem is that here after c8, his trick is uh, queen takes e1, and he suddenly he suddenly starts. Um, checkmating things and I I even calculated that so I thought my original idea here was to take and then I take on g7 and now if he plays king f8 then we win by uh, bishop d6 followed by rook e7 check collecting a queen so takes takes where just a piece up resigns but the problem is that during the game I actually failed to yeah failed to come up with something after king h8 Maybe there is something, but I uh, yeah I failed to find it, and I thought I just don't need it. And the, the final line here was rook e7 check, uh, queen takes e5, takes, and bishop c7. And all of a sudden, it's probably black who's better. So uh, yeah, this is obviously this is obviously a scenario to avoid. That's why I just played rook c7, rook c1. Which is a very solid move, just preparing c8 and uh, yeah, protecting everything. He played king g6. And this was the last uh, sort of critical point of the game. Um, because, well, I mean, I saw from the from, from far away that uh, what I played in the game actually wins. So in the game, I took on g7. Uh, now, if you take back, then it's just c8. Queen and white is a piece up and uh, checkmating. So king takes f5 is forced, rook takes g8. So now I'm about to, to promote a pawn. So bishop takes c7 is forced, bishop takes c7. And this is a very prosaic way to win it, but it's obviously the lost. I will show you last few moves later. But uh, yeah, here I actually wanted to go for some style points at some point, and I uh, was considering knight d6. And all of a sudden, I realized that actually after bishop d4, I don't see, I don't see a win anymore. 
So the, the thing is that he wants to take on a5 and take on d6 with a check in, in some lines, for instance, like here. And uh, if I go c8, queen, then I guess it just takes, takes, and he has a queen f4 check in the end, which just wins. Queen takes e5 and black wins. And the last unpleasant thing is that after bishop g3, which looks very solid, so I just go away and I, uh, I'm back with my c8 idea. Black actually saves himself by playing bishop f2. And once again, it's the same trick. So we cannot take because of queen takes this check. And if we do something like, for instance, let's include a check. So if we take here, then it's still queen f4 and queen takes c1. If we go um, c8, then it's bishop takes g3 and we can never take because of queen f4 checkmate. So this just doesn't work for uh, for white probably, and I think one of the commentators told me that knight d6, bishop d4 is 0, 0, 0, 0 all of a sudden. So that's why I decided to take on g7. Um, so yeah, indeed he took on f5, rook takes g8, took on c7, takes queen b2. Uh, now I played, so I was actually hoping for queen d2, um, trying to set... Um, line checkmate for, for a queen sort of, so he has to go to e files and I go rook eight check, he has to go to d file, doesn't matter where exactly, I go rook d8 and rook takes d2. Winning the game, he went queen b2 instead. I played rook c5, uh, I played rook e1. I think I played rook c5 check actually in the game. Pardon me. So this was the move. So rook c5 check, he went king e4. And I played rook d8 with the idea of uh, rook e5 check winning the game. So let's say if he takes, we just go rook e5, king f4, and rook f8 or rook d4 checkmate. And after some random moves, we just go rook e5 as well. And uh, yeah, king f4, king f4 runs into rook f8. And then if he takes, we are just a rook up. And yeah, I guess I'm capable of winning that. So that's why, that's why he resigned. So it was a very interesting game. So let's uh, review the critical points uh, one more time from the very beginning. So yeah, the first critical point is actually, I mean, it's funny to say this, but it's actually move six. So black has to, uh, to decide what he plays. So bishop b6 followed by knight e4 is a decent line, but there is also bishop b6 followed by d5, and there is also bishop e7. The way he played is fine, but uh, black had many alternatives. Then the second critical point is uh, after h6, bishop h4. So castling objectively is not a very good move. Uh, then white got the initiative. And after this inaccurate move, queen a8, white is just much better. A5, bishop f6, a4, bishop c4, knight g6. So this was um, the next critical point. So I had to come up with something smart, which I failed to do. So queen c2 was much better, as was knight h4. And, but I played queen d3, which gives away part of uh, part of white's advantage. So he went d d5, which was correct. Takes bishop e6. Now this brilliant queen takes g6 is uh, the best move indeed takes, takes, and this was uh, pretty much, I mean, objectively, as far as I know, this was Black's sort of last chance in the game. So he had to play queen c6 and go for the sending with an extra pawn for white and a decent chances for Black to save it. He went queen f7 instead, which looks very natural. And then I think, um, yeah, just played well. And in general, maybe rook f6 was more uh, more ambitious, but still, I mean, I know that the engine says black is lost, and I think we we actually failed to failed to come up with something uh, something smart for uh, for black today as well. After uh, so, I think rook rook a to e1 was our last line that we thought works for white. And after c6, we thought it's just h4, and then we keep coming slowly. And then, yeah, he went rook g8, and uh, after d takes c7, followed by bishop e5, white is just winning. And then 
I managed to convert this uh, in, uh, I mean, yeah, in quite an uh, in quite an accurate way. So, yeah, I don't think there is much to there is much to uh, uh, to discuss about about yeah last and moves. So yeah, this was obviously a very nice day at the office. So um, yeah, thank you guys for um, for joining, for uh, listening to me. And now I don't know if we have uh, if we have questions or we can just uh, stop right now. I actually ask my yeah chess twenty four friends to to help me and tell me what I should do exactly. So I think we are about to yeah we are about to finish this for today. Okay. No, no, I'm actually fine with uh, with finishing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So I I think we'll uh, yeah we'll finish now. So thank you once again for uh, for your attention and uh, yeah, see you soon at Chess Twenty Four.